Hello there and welcome to today's episode of Food Fantasy. If you were here yesterday for the beginner's guide, then you know that today I'm gonna talk about the guild and world boss. Um, first of all, I have to apologize that my voice may sound a little bit weird and that I may have to drink something in between. Since I do get sick and my throat is a little dry. Um, but I hope it's not gonna impact the video too much. Yesterday uh, there was a lot of condensed information and I hope it wasn't too much. Today is going to be a little bit shorter and the information is going to be maybe a bit more structured and perhaps a little easier to understand. Now this video is for anybody who is already level 32 or wants to prepare the right things once they are at that level. I don't know when exactly you unlock the disaster. Maybe someone can confirm this in the comments, but I don't actually actually know at what level you you're able to to do this. Um, it doesn't say here in the description, so I don't know. Maybe it's something you can do from the beginning, but I think you have to unlock this too. So new players don't have to worry about this, but it will help, of course, already knowing about the strategy, so you can build the right teams already. We're gonna talk about the guild boss first of all. And the reason I want to talk about the guild boss first is because it's probably the more complex team composition wise as the world boss. The world boss is pretty straightforward and you can do okay in the world boss even if you don't know all the details. The guild boss however is something that until you know what the best setup is you're going to struggle dealing damage. You're, you're not gonna be performing as well as you could no matter your level. You know, you can use the same level food salts and just by taking the right food salts you can double if not triple your damage. And that has to do, and I will, I will actually show you this now, we're just gonna go into a fight. We're gonna go with this team. This is not the ideal team. Um, it's just it's just something that I threw together and we're just gonna go in and we're just gonna We're just gonna let it play out right now. It's just the team. I currently had You know together From doing a little bit of research before starting this video now one thing that's important to note is that the guild boss Does not care if you have a tank. In fact, it's actually bad if you have a tank Because it deals damage Pretty much equal, equally throughout your entire team. No matter if you have a tank or what. The, the world boss attacks your entire team equally and also it deals damage on a percentage basis. So it does not matter if you have a lot of HP. In fact, actually having less HP is more important than having a lot of HP. And as you can see, this team is not performing all that well. Um, that has to do with the fact that Salad is Salad's healing rate is actually not high enough to keep up with this. But what I wanted to show you, rather, was this ability here. This is usually, and this ability is what really messes up your team the most. Um, this attack happens at around three minutes two minutes and one minute remaining in the fight and you can see that up here so you can basically be prepared for it you don't have to worry that it's gonna happen randomly it does not happen randomly it only happens at the certain time um, the first one is not so bad you can deal with the first one even if you do not have the ideal setup even if you simply go in with your normal setup that you use for everything else with like your tank your healer this and that you will probably be able to get past that but the damage really increases the second and third time the third time being an instant team wipe I think it deals 99% damage so I don't know if it's really possible to to survive it if you don't have the ideal setup now what is the ideal setup though and i will talk about that a bit right now so you know what the ideal setup is so as i said the guild boss unlocks for you once you're able to join a guild at level 32 and it is really important that you know what you're doing because it is one of the most crucial 
elements of contributing to your guild. Now, thankfully, you don't need to be a pay-to-win player in order to do a lot of damage in the guild boss. In fact, most of the ideal team for the guild boss consists of SR and even R food salts. Specifically, there is one that is invaluable and irreplaceable in having the ideal setup. And that is Tang One. Because Tang One's special ability is a shield that causes the entire team to be invulnerable for 4 seconds. Sadly, she also falls asleep for 8 seconds, so she doesn't heal for 8 seconds after using this ability. That makes it so that she kind of does need a secondary healer in order to take her along the team and for your team to not die because her rate of healing is just not high enough. Tangwan's rate of healing is not the most out of all the healers, um, but thankfully it doesn't really matter since the main reason we are taking Tangwan along is because of this shield. As you can see, you know, like it's just like this little ability and you just get like a shield for your entire team. And that is really crucial to have that because only if you're able to protect your entire team by making your entire team invulnerable, you're gonna be able to survive this. But there is a condition on top of that. You also need to have Mooncake because Mooncake is the linked partner for Tangwan. And this is covered very early in the tutorial of the game, so I don't feel like I need to explain it too much. But it's obvious that you need to be able to cast Tangwan's skill at the right timing. Otherwise, you're not gonna be able to survive the meteorite attacks, the fireball attacks, whatever we wanna call it. So, you need to have Mooncake. Luckily, Mooncake is really easy to obtain even for free to play players. She's not hard to obtain, she's actually one of the easiest to obtain food salts in the game. Only, only black tea is easier to obtain than Mooncake. Mooncake is really easy to get. She is um, really easy. So by level 30 you want to make sure you have Mooncake and you have Tangwan. If you do not have Tangwan, don't be too stressed just yet. Even if your healers are different, even if you have Tiramisu and, and Milk, you can still do fairly well. Specifically if you have Milk. Because then you can take black tea along and you're still gonna be able to survive the first two meteorites. You may not be able to survive the third one, but you can still survive the first one and the or the first two meteorites. And we're just gonna go ahead and I will do a lot more examples this time around compared to you know the other time. So we're just gonna we're just gonna go and we're gonna take like healers that aren't exactly ideal for this. So we're, we're gonna we're gonna take milk now as well. Where is she? Milk. And we also have black tea. Uh, we're, we're gonna keep the DPS the same because it doesn't really matter. Now another thing that's really important is that as I mentioned the world boss deals damage depending on how much HP your food salts have. So you want to make sure your food salts HP is pretty low. My black tea sadly has a bit too much HP. You want to try at least under level 60, you can still manage to get 2000 HP or lower. So try to have 2000 HP or lower on your food salts. For black tea, sadly, I I have a normal role here that is for me using her in PvP and for me using her in the catacombs and other than that. So really it's not ideal. Other than that, for your healers, you definitely do not want to have HP rolls. So we're gonna equip something that does not have any HP. So we're gonna go with full attack here. Once you are above level 60, something like level 70 to level 80, you can probably also go with crit rate because at that point you will gain enough crit rate, specifically if your food soul is a high star level. You're gonna be able to have enough crit rate 
in order to actually crit a whole ton. Um, well, you can see that when you look at my black tea, my black tea has a high crit rate, uh, 5,325 crit rate. In my testing, and I still need to do more testing, but in my testing this was something around a 20% crit rate. So if I gave her a crit rate, Fallen Angel, that might be going even further. And the crit rates also influence the healing done by your healers. So once you're level 70, 80, maybe you can run the crit rate healer. But for now, if you're under level 60, you definitely want to just go full attack because that's the most you can get out of your healer. Now, we also need to look at milk here. Uh, let me actually sort by team info so we can do that a bit faster. Let's look at this and we're gonna equip another one here. Now, the reason we want to have black tea though is so we can use the linked skill from milk. That is the only thing we're doing this for. So now we're gonna go ahead again and you'll likely notice that this is working out much better than the first time around when we had Salad along with us. So confirm our team once again. This is our team. We're using two healers that are not in the ideal guide setup. And we're just using free DPS with as low HP as possible. And we're still gonna be doing fairly well, I can tell you that much already. So let me just uh, situate myself here a bit, so we're ready, okay. So as you can tell already, it's going a little better than the first time around, because the rate of healing we're getting out of Tiramisu and of Milk is much higher. And you can use Milk's skill in order to counter the, the effect of the, the Growl attack that you just saw. And we should be able to to get through this fairly easily. I'm also not going to use Black T's special ability here, just for the sake of demonstration. This is probably the only annoying factor when it comes to using Black T. And that is <laughs> the fact that you actually have to trigger her attack skill. But then again, it does not even deal that much attack, so... Yeah, it's, it's not like it's really that ideal. Um, we just lost Sanma though, and that is actually pretty bad, and I have messed up, so we're, gonna, we're just gonna leave and restart here. I'm sorry to do this, but you may actually have to with this team, um, since it's not the ideal setup. It may happen that you have to restart and this is the way you restart. You just click leave and you can try this again as many times as possible. So don't be afraid to try out some different combos, you know, try out some different healers, see what works for you. And we're just gonna try this again um, because we did lose Sanma there and I was actually probably not paying enough attention. So we want to make sure we use Milk's heal here right away as soon as that growl happened. Um, the sad thing is that we cannot control the healing and the ultimate attack from Tiramisu. Therefore, it's, it's a little bit imbalanced. It, it's better if you can use both of the skills and you have linked skills for both of your healers. Therefore, it does not happen that you... You get caught out like that, like what just happened to us. Um, here it's gonna be a bit tight. We're gonna use uh, milk skill one more time. And now we're not gonna be able to use it anymore until the first meteorite attack. And um, we just got Tiramisu's heal there, that was very crucial. And now we're just gonna have to get ready for the meteor to, to hit us. And that's gonna come up there and we're just gonna use milk's heal pretty much like right there like right at the moment it hits um sadly though you still kind of die afterward so you you really want to try to be as prepared as possible um depending on what healers you take along the general strategy is that you need to try to be full health at the time the meteor hits you and then you want to use milk's heal right as it hits so you can heal that up again but as i said this is not the ideal setup um you may be able to get past the first meteorite the second and third is going to be a little bit of a problem but if that is all you have 
you can make it work somehow. You may have to re-roll and like restart sometimes. And keep in mind that my milk is actually not that high of a level right now. We could probably, this would probably have gone a little better if I had actually leveled her up a little further and I actually can't find her. Um, she should be all the way at the top for all my R food sorts. So as you can see, she's just a level 50. Her skills are just at level 14. Um, so we could definitely increase the rate of healing a bit more if that was all we had. Now, um, the next better ideal setup for this is probably to use Tiramisu instead. Using Tiramisu works a little better um, because his rate of healing is just that much better. You can probably, if you time it right or if you have luck, actually there's nothing with timing here, but if you're lucky, you can use sweet tofu and milk. For example, if you don't have anything else, you can use sweet tofu and milk. But sweet tofu is really um, nice for the guild boss. But he's also not the most ideal healer. The most ideal healer is still just gonna be Tang Wan. Now as a secondary healer, it's really good to have Sweet Tofu around though, because his rate of healing is just that great. Specifically the fact that he heals your entire team. If you have Tang Wan and Sweet Tofu, that is the ideal setup. If you don't have that, even having Tang Wan milk and black tea is gonna work as well. So we're gonna look at that in the next example. We're now gonna look at something that's a little bit more ideal. And as you can tell, I'm going from less ideal to more ideal to eventually the perfect setup. So we're now gonna go with Tang Wan. And we're gonna go with milk next. And you want to have a healer whose ability you can use almost all the time unless it's sweet tofu if it's if it's sweet tofu it does not matter that you can't trigger his ability whenever you want but this is the next ideal kind of setup you want to have a tongue one over here with a mooncake and you have want to have a secondary healer whose rate of healing is either so high that it doesn't matter if you have a linked skill, so sweet tofu, but if you don't have sweet tofu and it arguably you won't have sweet tofu, the timing for level 32 because you can only start getting his shards at level 30 when you can do shard fusions. So we're gonna look at this next setup. So if you have Tang Wan and you have Mooncake, but you don't have sweet tofu yet, don't be afraid of using milk and using black tea because this setup is already good enough or should be good enough to last the entire fight so if you have this setup if this is your setup it's already good just just ignore the fact that we have sunma here you can have any other dps here it doesn't matter if it's sunma or not because we're not looking at a sunma specific build yet where he's becoming mandatory for the build this is the next ideal setup and I'm choosing milk here because I would guess that most of you have milk and most of you have black tea. Therefore you can make the strategy work and it's very easy to get mooncake. So even if you don't have mooncake right now, go get mooncake. As long as you have Tang Wan, mooncake, milk and black tea, you can make this strategy work in your favor. So we're just gonna go ahead and um, actually not fight just yet because I have forgot one thing and you should always make sure that you do this always make sure you have the right fallen angels equipped because we swapped the fallen angels earlier so we now have to swap them back it's great if you can share fallen angels between your food salts but it also means that you have to make sure you remember switching them back so first setup that will probably be able to last us the entire duration of the fight once again don't use a, don't use the tank so let's just jump into it and see how this team performs compared to the one before that if this is way too repetitive for you and you just want to know what the ideal setup is just skip through the video you know there's there's no reason for you to you know to watch this entire video so what you want to do is you want to use Tang Wan's skill first 
or second, it doesn't matter. You just need to make sure that Tang Wan's skill is ready by the time you hit the first meteor. So I'm just actually, I actually just here skipped milk skin skill once because I feel like I have to use milk skill kind of now and then I have to use Tang Wan's skill again the next time the growl happens and then then we're good to go. So the next growl should happen something around like right here or something like that. Yep, there we go. Now I'm using that skill again at like 330. And then at around 3 minutes and 10 or so, we're gonna use milk skill again around now for the growl. And now is when we need to put the speed down a little bit because now we need to get the timing right. So you want to make sure that you get this timing. When you see that glow is when you want to use this skill. So boom, we survived, we can go on. We can speed it up again and our skill for milk is up again as well. And we can heal that. And that is why it's so important that you take a healer who either, like Sweet Tofu, has a very high rate of healing or you can control. If you can control the heal for milk, you can get through this entire fight. You don't actually need to have Sweet Tofu in order to survive this entire fight. It is completely possible and once more we're using milk seal right here she actually just got interrupted like right there by being silenced and when that happens to you and you're about to die here don't be afraid of actually you know restarting it seems though like we're good and tang wan skill should be able to get us all the way to to let us you know survive the entire thing and already milk skill is ready again and we can use that once more and we're already nearing the last meteor attack um, first there's gonna be another growl where we use tang wan skill here and we're also gonna have to be ready to use milk skill one more time and it should be around now come on Come on, don't be like that. There we go. Use that one more time. And I've slowed time down here because now we're at the point where a team vibe might happen. And I gotta be really careful here that I'm not getting silenced. Because otherwise my team would be wiped and that's that. And as you just saw, we survived or should be able to survive the entire fight this time around and we're not using anything that is not available to a free-to-play player. You just gotta have a little bit of luck in order to get Tang Wan. But I do feel like you should be able to have her by level 32. If you don't have her by level 32, you're probably not gonna be able to survive the entire fight. But you can, you can already prepare for the time when you actually do have her. Simply focus on getting Mooncake and focus on doing the strategy. But as you saw, this team is already good enough. As long as you have Tang Wan, Black Tea, Milk and Mooncake, you should be able to deal more than 200,000 damage by the time you're level 32. And no, that's, that's, not, that's not a joke, you should be able to deal around 200,000 damage. Um, of course that depends on the strength of your fallen angel and the strength of your, of your, um, oh, I think I just, I'm, I'm gonna crash here. <laughs> yep, yeah, we definitely crashed. So we're just gonna have to restart this. And, um, I'm not gonna cut this video. I'm so tired of exporting my video. Um, it's really annoying because if I have to cut two videos together, the video, putting it together and then exporting it takes a long ass time. I mean, maybe I'll cut this out, but to be honest, <laughs> whatever, you know, like just, just whatever. It's not going to be that big of a deal, you know, like suddenly my guide is bad because, <laughs> because there was a cut in it. Um, we're just gonna get straight into the game again, and then we're gonna talk about the most ideal setup. Um, but as you can, as you could see, um, the team we've built right now should be fairly easy, even for free-to-play players. 
Uh, if you swap this out for maybe, uh, I would probably suggest swapping this out for hamburger. If you're a complete free-to-play player, this is probably the team that you should try to go for at level 32. The moment you're level 32, if you have this team going, yeah, that should that should do pretty well. Of course, instead of you know a hamburger you can also go with something else any dps you have that that is good if you have a red wine that is also good um anything that has single target damage is gonna be really nice um and anything that has area of effect damage is not gonna be as nice uh brownie is another alternative that you could use of course it's not as strong as sanma but you know that's just you know how it is if you want to know how to get Sanma by level 32, it's pretty possible. Um, I will I will go and explain that one more time this time around, even though I have already explained it yesterday. But maybe the 1 hour and 30 minutes length of yesterday's video is scaring you off a bit of watching that video. Now the way you can get Sanma the easiest without relying on luck is the rebate system. As you can see on rank 3 of the rebate system, you can choose either Sanma, Red Wine or Tiramisu. Sadly, I picked Tiramisu. Don't make that same mistake, pick Sanma. He's the most important SR out of all of the SRs. The amount of money you need to spend for Sanma is roughly 30 bucks. Um, you can actually t check that here, you need 98 points. 98 points is right here actually it's not 30 it's it's more like 20 bucks or like 17 the way you can do that is by if you are going to spend money i suggest buying the summoners and the adventure pack that'll total at around 12 dollars a month if you can only get one of them get the summoners pack eventually by spending six dollars a week you can get sanma eventually because that only takes you around three weeks in order to get Sanma. Uh, three months in order to get Sanma. If that's too long for you, if you don't want to wait three months before you can get Sanma, get both packs. That way you can actually get it right as you level up to level 20, I believe. Because this is going to bring you up to $12. And you need like 17, right? The next thing you can spend money on that is a good value and you don't need to feel like you're being ripped off is Rice's Gifts. As you level up, these are gonna unlock. The moment you level up to level 10, you're gonna get the level 10 gift pack for Rice. And for the first 12 hours, this is gonna be discounted. The normal price for it is $1.99, so $2. The discount is, I don't actually know how big the discount is because I have not bought this as level 10, but I probably should have. But at that time I was still not sure if I was going to spend money. But that's another $2, bringing you up to $14. Next, if you get level 15, this one costs, I think, $2.99. That's another $3. And that brings you up to 17 if that's still barely not enough, you can get the next gift pack at level 20 and that one is, I believe, $5.99 or something like that. And that will definitely get you over the threshold. So it's fairly easy and you can actually get Sanma with buying reasonable and good value items in the game in order to get Sanma. And if that is the only money you ever spend in the game, trust me, it was well spent. Getting Sanma by that time and being able to contribute to your guild, you are gonna be able to join much better guilds. Because something that a lot of guilds might ask you is, how much damage do you deal to the world boss and to the guild boss, but more specifically the guild boss? Um, it's really important like it may become the reason why you aren't hired by a guild if you can't say that you have a good team for the guild boss and you can just join whatever guild or make your own and take a screenshot of how much damage you did and you can prove that you're dealing good amounts of damage even as a level 40 player you can probably get into a good guild because even some level 50 even some level 60 players don't deal 
good damage in the guild boss and that is because they're not using the right strategy so now that we talked about how to get sunma let's talk about the sunma team so it builds again on the same team of what we've already built but instead of using milk we're gonna use miso soup and uh, as you can see miso soup's skill links with sanma this is why this team is only possible if you have sanma now sanma is good even without miso soup so if you don't want to use miso soup you can still use milk but honestly miso soup is not hard to get he's an r futsal it's gonna be easy even as a free to play player now why pick miso soup because miso soup actually does a lot of damage. Miso soup deals a lot of damage and um, the reason for that is that his basic attack actually isn't a heal. This lowers the rate of healing down quite a bit so you have to be much more on point with using the healing. That is why it is almost only possible although i won't say it's impossible but it is definitely more viable to take miso soup when you have sanma of course if you have miso soup on three stars and your tangwan is on three stars as well maybe you don't have to need sanma so if you don't have sanma you can still use miso soup it's just not gonna be as easy because the rate of healing is not gonna be as high if you can't control his skill I feel like that is really just important. I feel like the only healer you can take along on top of Tangwan, next to Tangwan, that doesn't need a linked skill is probably Sweet Tofu. But when we look at this, at his basic skill, you can see that it deals 120% of his attack stack stat plus 50 extra damage for 4.5 seconds. So that's really strong. 120 of his attack stat if we actually give him a strong fallen angel you know like I, I use this one if we actually give him a strong fallen angel and and use his his skill you know that's actually gonna do quite a lot of attack he has 405 that means with this we're likely going to deal something around hmm, probably something around 1000 attack at least and compared to any other healers that don't add any form of damage to the fight, this is much preferable. That is why he's so good at the guild boss. So now, since we have set that up, we're gonna do that whole thing again. Once again, I'd like to note, Black Tea is not the most ideal here. If you have, you should probably use something else. Other viable options for this are B52 if you have him very upgraded. If he's like 3 stars or so, he's probably outperforming a black tea. Um, next one that you could take along instead of black tea is actually red wine. Red wine and Sanma are pretty equal in terms of damage and they're both single target damage so red wine is also really nice but red wine isn't that easy to obtain he's kind of rare to to have so you have to be lucky in order to have him uh, another viable choice to add to this roster is hamburger since he's also fairly easy to get definitely much easier than red wine and his damage is not that much lower than red wines it's just that you probably want to have Mooncake before you focus on Hamburger. But if you're already focusing on Mooncake the moment you start playing, like if you're a new player and watching this, you can probably have Mooncake at 5 stars by the time you hit level 32. It depends. It depends on your playstyle, it depends of course. Um, it should be possible for you to at least have Mooncake on 2 stars or something like that already. 5 stars may be a bit much maybe but three stars should be possible for you uh, to hit at level 32 and then you can probably get and focus on on hamburger instead or something like that but i'm just gonna go with black tea because it deals the most damage out of my food salts the energy attack isn't that valuable but her energy but her basic attack actually deals a lot of damage 
So let's go in one more time and do this whole ordeal one more time. This time around though with our ideal setup. I also know that I have switched the Fallen Angel. I also know that these guys all have the right Fallen Angels. We're looking at a team power of 50,000. But keep in mind that doesn't matter so much. It is much more important to have the best setup. Even if your Tang one is not such a high level still use her because you're still gonna do more damage because you're surviving longer and don't use a tank really just don't what i like to do though is to have and um i'm actually gonna cancel this just because i don't like this setup um i prefer oops i prefer having miso soup as my primary leader here because his skill is the one i like to use first because that just brings me better into the rhythm and you don't have to do this the same way i know a lot of people who say that they actually don't use uh, miso soup skill as much as possible but rather they use miso soup skill only when necessary like they'll only use it when their team becomes low so we're just gonna try this right now we're we're gonna we're gonna try i feel like trying um uh, the thing is that i usually would use miso soup skill right here this is where i would actually use it because i i just don't like my my souls my food salts to have low HP because yeah that's just a whole bunch of trouble and we're just gonna see how this goes and yeah this is this is when people start using him and uh, no see that happened um, your timing just has to be so on point when you only want to use this skill as little as possible so that you get the most out of his basic attack I, I don't like doing that though I don't know you know like Maybe you can get more basic attacks out of him if you use his skill less. But I prefer being topped off. I prefer my team being at at full health as much as possible. So I use it right here. Like I use it right away um, around here. And then for the next one I will use Tongue ones. And it's just back and forth. Like you'll, you'll notice that I actually use them back and forth like this. And then the next growl that happens, I'm gonna use Miso Soup skill again. And yeah, maybe you can get away with not having to do that if your Tang One is on a higher level. Your Tang One heals a lot more. The rate of healing for your Tang One is a lot higher than than my Tang One. Since since she's only two stars, and you know, yeah. And we're gonna just go back and forth. And the next time we're gonna use Miso Soup skill again. And it is kind of just a strategy I have developed for myself. So around now we're gonna use Miso Soup again. And now we're facing the first ultimate attack, if you want to call it that, from the boss. There it goes. We're just gonna use Tang One skill as soon as the glow appears. And it's just gonna be same rhythm again. We're gonna use Miso Soup. And that's why I developed this sort of back and forth. Sometimes I could use the others, other healer skill, but you know, this just works. And it also kind of makes it so that I can use my Tang One's skill in between. And it's just, I also have a visual cue. Every time there's a growl, I use the skill. And I go back and forth between Miso and Tang One. That way I don't need to pay all that much attention because it's just... Okay, now something happened that can sometimes happen. My Tang 1 was silenced, so I'm just going to restart this. But actually, since I've already shown you the strategy, I'm not actually going to go and, you know, do it once more because this video is already going rather lengthy and I also still want to talk about the world boss. Now the world boss I mentioned earlier, I don't know when it actually unlocks. Um, this is entirely different but also kind of similar from, from the guild boss. Here I can actually show you the skills 
he uses. Um, so Purgatory. Deal massive damage to the nearest enemy and a small amount to other enemies. So there's going to be a lot of area of effect damage due to Purgatory. But most of it is going to be directed at the front to like a tank. Thunder Wind Blade. Greatly decrease all food source damage. This spell as soon as possible. This is only possible if you have one of the only two healers in the game right now that can do this. Both of these healers are not able to be obtained right now. One of them might be possible for you to pick up sometime soon again. Their, her event might come back again and that is Laba Kongi. If you can get Laba Kongi, really try to get her because this spell in the Thunder Wind Blade is really important. Now, move like thunder, deal damage to all food salts and randomly stun two food salts. Again, a lot of area of effect. That means, once again, the rate of healing needs to be pretty high. But the most difficult thing and the reason why you will die in this fight is Nirvana. Greatly increases the attack power, defense power and attack speed as the battle progresses. Skill effects will increase. So, not only does the boss's attack power, defense power and attack speed increase, also the skills like Move Like Thunder, Purgatory and Thunder Wind Blade are gonna be more effective, they're gonna increase. But as this states, some stages can be dispelled. That means that Nirvana can be made to progress slower if you have a futsal that can dispel it. This once again is something for Mooncake. This is a good job for Mooncake. So if you have Mooncake, she really becomes mandatory for this. So let's just clear all this and talk about really what is the most important here. If you do not have, if you do not have access to Laba Kongi or sweet, sweet strawberry daifuku, you probably want to use something like sweet tofu and you want to make him the leader so he heals right away. There's probably three setups or yeah I would say three, there's a fourth but you probably wouldn't want to run this. So there's one healer, two healer, DPS, DPS, DPS. I'm, I'm not using anything spe specific, I'm just putting DPS in. So you either take two healers and three DPS, one healer and four DPS, or what you can also do is that you can take a healer, a tank and three DPS. Now who should you use as a tank? Um, this one might come as a surprise, but Tom Yum is actually really good for this. Tom Yum is actually really good. If you're a bit lower level, survivability is important. If your DPS isn't that strong, if you're if you don't have many strong DPS, this strategy is what I would recommend. I would recommend a healer and a tank. Now it's also possible that maybe, you know, like just to have a little bit more healing, you want to take another healer and then again you could go for miso soup and then if you have Sanma, once again Sanma, um, I would suggest this setup um, of course then also Mooncake. So this setup is not so bad if you do have Sanma but you're still a fairly low level meaning that your survivability is not that high then this setup is actually not so bad. Other than that, this is also not so bad because invulnerability is really strong against this boss. So that's okay. This is a bit better because he deals a lot of area of effect damage. Um, this is also possible naturally, but you're not gonna deal as much damage this way. Um, of course, since you have a basic attack from Miso soup that also deals damage, you're gonna deal a bit more damage here. And personally, what I'm running is an off tank. 
and one healer. And I noticed that there is a big difference between Chinese guides and Western guides. Most Western guides suggest that you use a tank. You can use Gyosa as well. Gyosa is a really, really, really great tank for this setup. He is probably, arguably, right now the best tank for this, unless you have Crab Longbow or Gingerbread on at least two stars, then you can and should probably use those. But Gyosa is really good to use here as well. So Gyosa is good, Sukiyaki is not good. Who also isn't that great, although you can use him, is, I'm just trying to find him, is Escargo. Um, Tom Yum is probably better in terms of surviving the entire fight than Steak. However, I'm using Steak because I've looked at almost all guides that I could and translated some of the Chinese guides. And one thing I noticed is that the Chinese guides mostly prefer running one healer and four DPS. And I've asked myself, why is that? And it pretty much comes down to the fact that once you level up, you obtain more and more good DPS food salts and eventually survivability and flat out dealing more damage in lesser time becomes kind of lopsided. So while you might survive longer with two healers or with a tank, if you have really strong DPS, you're probably gonna deal more damage by using one more DPS instead of using a healer. You will not survive the entire fight, but you will deal more damage and in the end, the rank is determined by how much damage you did and not by how much or how long you survived. So early on I suggest when your DPS are still low, go for survivability. Go go with two healers and and a tank, you know. You can you can also just go with if you're if you're free to play player and you're kind of struggling and you're early and so on. You can also run this. This should probably work or or anything like that. And then of course you can also use, you know, like you can use your moon cake, you can you can use your black tea and stuff like that. Um, just run two healers and a tank. That should boost your survivability and by surviving longer you can deal more damage. As soon as you're leveling up you want to probably only have one healer and some more DPS. And um, really Mooncake is pretty mandatory here because it dispels the Nirvana. Other than that, Miso Soup is obviously a pretty great pick. And a lot of people use something like Miso Soup as well together with this. And, and then they use Sunma in order to get the, the linked skill there. And then a Mooncake. And then sometimes people will use a tank or they will use another DPS. That is really up to you, just try some things out, just see what works, see what deals the most amount of damage. For me what I've noticed is that I deal more damage with a off tank like Stake compared to a fully defensive tank like Bonito Rise. I originally picked up Bonito Rise because I thought he was going to be really great for the world boss in terms of survivability since he cuts down the amount of of damage the world does by a percent. Not by an amount, but by a percentage. Therefore, leveling him up and leveling up his skills are gonna be really making it easy to survive the entire boss fight. But he doesn't deal a lot of damage. So I've noticed that instead of that, using using stake really helped me deal a lot more damage. Another thing that I have done is that I've usually used this setup. This is my usual setup. You can't have Lava unless you already have her or when the event comes up next, so you may not have her. Um, I've also thought about maybe using Tosu, so I have Lava's linked skill, but the next best option to that, I thought, was probably to just use Miso Soup here as well. Because it's gonna boost my survivability by a good amount. And 
it is gonna also increase my damage or rather it will not decrease my damage all that much. Another thing that I probably want to do and experiment around with is to use red wine. Because red wine, as you can see, links with steak, so steak might be able to deal a lot more damage as well. But I feel like this setup with miso soup is gonna be much better for me. Um, in this case, I'm not showing you a lot of different examples, I'm not running these, I'm just showing you the setups. Um, this is the setup I want to try today and see how well it does. So we're gonna confirm this, but before we can get going, we really need to look at the Fallen Angels again. Now, I said that the world boss was kind of similar to the to the guild boss, and that is because the world boss also deals damage depending on the health of your team. However, it is not very clear whether the entire health pool is what it is based on or the health pool of your strongest unit or like the health pool of the unit with the highest amount of health. Therefore, it is suggested that you simply try to keep your health as low as possible and also as equal as possible. So you want to try to have 2000 HP across the board here. So we're just gonna go ahead and um, oh, actually we can't click on team info. Let's sort this team out here. I just like to do that so I, I'm sure I'm not forgetting anybody. Let's do this and then let's do that. And now we're gonna talk a little bit about the fallen angels for this kind of setup. Steak is actually fairly easy to, to get, even as a free-to-play player, because you can get them in delivery. So, really, I feel like Steak is a good pick here, because he has high amounts of defense. As you can see, he has 164 defense at 3 stars, and that is without a Fallen Angel who boosts defense. So, we're gonna switch this over to a defense. And already we have 316 and as you saw this is not at all a very powerful fallen angel this is mostly blue rolls so it's really not all that powerful it, it could be way stronger so um, ideally for if you use Tom Yum you want to have something like 300 but more ideally you want to have something like uh, more like 400 defense or something like that. But as you can see, his defense is not really as high. Um, we only have him at 3 stars though, so if you have him at 5 stars, his defense is going to go up. But you need a really strong defensive Fallen Angel. So I would suggest that if you want to use Tom Yum, you want to use something, you know, like an Ukamochi Enhanced or a Tsuchigumu on staunch with defensive rolls. So that you get the most out of your Tom Yum. Um, that said though, let's check the rest of our Fallen Angels. We have the defense set up here. We need to increase your healing. So let's do that and let's go back and Sanma should still be good. Yep. And Miso Soup we probably, yeah, still also good. So this is my setup that I'm actually gonna try for the first time today. This is the first time I'm actually taking Miso Soup along to this fight. Usually I only have one healer and three DPS instead of Miso Soup. But we're just gonna see if this is increasing my survivability and the world boss is really all about survival versus damage. Sometimes surviving longer can increase your damage, but sometimes increasing your damage and reducing your survival can be better. So you really just have to try out with what you have available. If you have really strong DPS, just as a rule of thumb, if you have really strong DPS, I suggest that you go with more DPS. If you have really weak DPS, you probably want to survive longer to accumulate more damage. And if your healers are very weak, you also want to mostly focus on having a tank and not just two healers and three DPS, so have two healers, two DPS and one tank or something like that. 
but really you just have to try things out you just have to balance things and just really figure out what the best options are for your year in, in this sort of setup the next thing is the blessings um, the blessing that is probably gonna benefit most people the most is the 100% crit rate for all food soil attacks. You're probably gonna deal the most damage with that. Once you're a bit of a higher level, you may get a bit more damage out of Thunderous Wind, the attack speed one here on the side. Um, I don't think that the Crazy Flames is actually that useful. I, I don't know, I, fi I find the Crazy Flames to be the, the least useful out of all of these, but it just really depends. Once again, this is all up to you, of course you have to spend crystals on this, and I actually feel like I would not spend crystals on, on this, unless I'm like a high level player and I'm trying to really get into like the leaderboards, like the top 100 or something like that. So I can get a frame or something like that. Like, like there's some sort of reward for that if you get into the top 100 or something like that. Or if you're competing for like the top 10 or something like that. Other than that, I suggest you just don't use it because you don't get the amount of crystals that you're spending back. It, It's just a minus trade here, so I'm not using it. The revive really sucks though because by the time your team dies, your the boss is already so impression. so strong that <laughs> you can't survive much longer anyway so let's just see how this goes this time around as you can see my tank at the beginning of the fight is really able to to survive this quite well but that's gonna change and we're primarily going to use miso soup's skill here whenever we take a big chunk of damage and we want to be able to survive so we're just we're just gonna watch this and so far I don't feel like I really have to use it. Um, see and just now we also got the energy skill out of our other healer. So we're pretty much looking solid for now. But of course there may be a moment when we want to use Miso Soup's heal. Um, not now though because we're already close to the, here we go, close to the energy skill of our other healer. But once uh, this fight has progressed a little further, we're probably gonna make a bit more use of this spell, the second heal we have available for us here. So as you can see, the damage is gradually uh, increasing. Another thing that can happen to you is that your healer may get stunned sometimes. Because there's a skill that the, the bird uses that increases uh, that, that stuns two random units so i just used the spell there and we're just going to use this now and as you can see it's working fairly well but i don't know if we're going to have miso soup skill available in time for the next time we need it but we're just going to have to see so we're just going to watch so we're taking a lot of damage here and i hope this is going to be in time nope it wasn't in time I should have used it sooner, but I was actually silenced. So we're just gonna we're just gonna go through this, and we're likely gonna die here. Um, well, very likely. So there goes that. Um, now we're gonna use this, and as I said, you're not gonna survive much after after you survived and after you revived, because well, as you can see, without my skills available to myself. I just don't have the amount of healing necessary to to really do something here. But I can already tell that my that the time I've survived, you can check that up here, is among the best ones. Usually I die at around 8 minutes and something remaining, so this is like a minute longer. And we're looking at sadly only 245 damage. So right now I can pretty much conclude that I deal more damage by taking another DPS with me and not miso soup and just use one healer. I don't survive as long but I deal more damage. So you'll just have to see what works for you. Sometimes survival works but sometimes more damage is better. So you'll just have to test this out. Some days you may do a test and you'll actually end up dealing less damage than the day before. Just now I also suffered from that. I 
I would have dealt more damage if I had just gone with my normal setup, but at least now I know. Now I know and now I can change this again to, to the setup I usually run. And that should be dealing over 300,000 damage once again. But of course this really just depends on you, on what food salts you have available and what works for me might not work for others and so on and so forth and you know it's it's just really a trial and error um i don't think there's one specific perfect team setup although of course this is the type of game where actually there is there is definitely one team setup that if you're at level 60 and you compare like max level food salts if level 60 was the um the highest then definitely there is of course something that deals the most amount of damage um you're just gonna have to find for yourself with what food salts you have available and at what levels you have them available what works for you but i hope that it helped you a bit to kind of know that there's like a bit of a balance thing between survival and damage you're just gonna have to try what works for you are you dealing more damage if you survive longer or dealing more damage if you survive less but have more damage food salts on board with you another thing that i will probably try out again tomorrow is by not taking a tank and checking how much damage i do with that but i do feel like specifically because stake is a high dps tank if i raise his defense just a bit more i'm actually looking at a solid team because i feel like he's the best mixture between survival and damage because he has high defense so you're gonna survive fairly long and he also deals good amount of damage while also increasing your survivability so i feel like it's probably very ideal to have stake on your team for the world boss but that's just my feeling so far whenever i wasn't taking stake i have not dealt as much damage because i haven't survived as long or even when i survived longer than with stake i still didn't do as much damage as with him on board and that's just my thoughts on the matter um i feel like i'm gonna make this video a bit too long if i'm also gonna give you a pvp guide so we're gonna have a pvp guide tomorrow and we're also gonna have a pretty normal episode tomorrow and i hope that this guide on the bosses was helpful to you and we're gonna conclude this episode by actually going and fighting the guild boss you do not have to stick around for this but i will just fight the guild boss now um you can watch if if you want uh you don't have to go it's just what i'll do real quick here and i will also answer one of the questions that i was asked on my video from yesterday i've already answered that in the comment as well but if you also wondered about this i'm gonna answer this right now so the question was what food to cook to gain money and the answer is pretty simple texture food anything that has texture and of course salmon is probably the earliest one you can gain but there's definitely other ones in sakurajima at least there's the fried chicken there's the creamed spinach um om rice also has good texture actually has really nice texture here and also in accordance with my guide yesterday you want to not use any seasoning on om rice because you can only increase the flavor by that but not the texture other than that i think like that's it for the texture foods at least in sakurajima um of course there's also where is it though should be here somewhere there's of course also the baked lobster no no not the baked lobster the crab sashimi and the lobster sashimi no just the crab sashimi okay so the crab sashimi is probably the best one out of sakurajima but you don't get that until level 58 50 level 58 is the earliest you can get this dish so yeah 
I simply focus on salmon sashimi. It has the highest amount of texture out of all my foods. It's fast to cook, so I can just cook a whole bunch of it. And that is to answer the question from yesterday. And now I'm just gonna shut up and fight the guild boss. And you can see how much damage this team setup that, that I have deals to the guild boss. Now, I am not sure though if I have the right Fallen Angels equipped. So I'm, I'm just gonna quickly check. I feel like I don't have them equipped. Specifically on Tang One, yes. On Tang One, I definitely need to equip the right Fallen Angel. It helps if you simply remember what the strength of the team is. If you can remember the team strength, you can kind of tell in the screen when you look at this and you click on this, you can check. I remember that 50,000 is kind of the, the strength of my go-to team. So if this is below 50,000, I know that something is not right. I'll know that something is amiss. But we've already talked about this earlier, so this is not really part of the guide. This is now just me doing this because I have to do it anyway and I might as well do it here on screen. So you get to watch it one more time. Oh my lord, so now something happened that only sometimes happens to me and I feel a bit embarrassed that it did happen But I was silenced and I was like, ah, you know, it's gonna be fine, but eventually it wasn't fine <laughs> But thankfully we can just restart and um, Yeah, if you want to if you want I could actually make a fail compilation for this, this world boss because I will be honest with you when I was still practicing how the best way for me to do the miso soup tang one combo is, uh, I was failing a lot. No, no kidding. I was I was failing a whole lot, and I I should still have a lot of that on video. <laughs> it's just sometimes happens. Don't don't be too stressed if something like that happens to you. You can just restart, and I feel like that's probably the biggest tip for the world boss. You can restart. So just restart if you have to. If, you, if you're getting silenced in the second or third or even the first one of the ultimate meteor attacks that the boss does, don't be afraid of actually restarting the boss fight. It's pretty much part of how you get to do the most damage. Because un unexpected things can always happen. And we're probably gonna look at like 600,000 damage here with this team setup. And as you saw, my Mooncake is only 3 stars. My Sunma is just 1 star. 2 stars on Miso Soup. And not so ideal Black Tea on 5 stars. It's really not the most ideal team. Um, if I had known what kind of team to build before, I probably would have done things very differently. I would have focused on getting Sanma. Um, I feel like I even used his shards for fusion. So really, I wish I could punch myself in the face for doing that. But since I made these mistakes, I can now tell you don't make the same mistake as I did. Specifically, if if you want to spend money on the game, really just spend it on trying to get Sanma. Because it's the most powerful SR you can get for money. It's the most important SR you can get for money. So if you want to spend money on the game, or even if you only want to spend 20 bucks on the game to get yourself an advantage in the game, get Sanma. That is the best way for you to boost yourself in the game um, from the start because Sanma is just that strong and if you 
end up summoning him once, then he's already even more strong than, than that. And if you continue spending money, you also keep continuing getting shorts for him. So really, that's just my biggest advice. Get Sanma. If you can. If you can spend 20 bucks, why not? Alright, 638,000 damage. That looks pretty solid. And of course, I can still top that. I can still increase that. And I'm gonna continue doing that every day. Every day I'm probably gonna level up some skills or anything like that. I'm also gonna try to get red wine. So maybe the next time I'm fighting the guild boss, I'm actually gonna try with red wine instead of black tea to see if that deals more damage. For now, I want to thank you so much for watching and hope that this helped you out and that it was not too long. I also want to apologize if my if my voice sounded a little weird somewhere in the video. That is pretty much because I am starting to get the sniffles and I absolutely hate having the sniffles. But I still wanted to record this video today, um, even though I feel a little worse than yesterday. But that shouldn't stop me from recording the videos I want to record. And tomorrow we're gonna have a PvP. If you still have questions or you want to share your thoughts on the world boss or guild boss, please leave a comment below. And with that, I'm gonna leave you to playing whatever games you wanna play. But really, play Food Fantasy, it's a great game. I'm such a dork, aren't I? <laughs>